This has happened throughout millions and millions of years. This is mainstream science. The poles do flip. Over the past two centuries, our magnetic field has been acting up. It's been getting weaker and shifting its magnetic north pole from the Canadian Arctic to Siberia. And in more recent years, this drift southward has picked up speed, zooming along at up to 30 miles per year. The Earth's magnetic field is like a giant invisible cloak wrapped around our planet, created by the swirling currents of molten iron deep beneath the surface, about 1-800 miles below us. This hot, bubbling cauldron of liquid iron churns and flows, generating electric currents as it moves. These electric currents give birth to electromagnetic fields, which weave and dance around the Earth. Now, why does the magnetic field sometimes flip its pulleys? Well, that's a bit of a mystery. It's like the Earth has a mind of its own. We've seen evidence of this flip-flopping in the Sun's magnetic field, which switches every 11 years like clockwork. Our magnetic field has been around for a whopping 4 billion years, and it's gone through quite a few reversals in that time. It's flipped about 10 times in just the last 2.6 million years. Some experts think we're overdue for another reversal, considering that the last one happened 780,000 years ago. But here's the thing. These reversals aren't like buses. They don't come on a schedule. They're as unpredictable as a sudden rainstorm on a sunny day. So, what's this magnetic field actually like? Well, imagine a massive magnet buried deep within the Earth, aligned roughly with its axis. One end of the magnet points toward the geographic North Pole, and the other end toward the South Pole. But here's a twist. The magnetic poles aren't exactly where the geographic poles are. There's about a 10 degree difference. It's like nature's little surprise. The magnetic field lines form a continuous loop around the Earth, creating a protective shield against the onslaught of solar winds and cosmic rays. They're like invisible highways guiding charged particles around the planet, keeping us safe and sound. It's a magnetic marvel that has been shaping our world for eons. The Earth has two sets of poles, the geographic poles and the magnetic poles. You might know that the geographic North Pole is in the icy Arctic Ocean, while its counterpart, the geographic South Pole, lies in Antarctica. But the magnetic poles are a bit trickier. They're not fixed like the geographic poles. Instead, they follow the magnetic lines that dive into the Earth. Right now, the magnetic North Pole, also called the North Depole, hangs out on Ellesmere Island in northern Canada. When you use a magnetic compass and it points north, it's not aiming at the geographic North Pole, but rather at this magnetic one, which is about 310 miles away. Here's a cool fact. These magnetic poles are wanderers. Back in 1831, the British explorer James Clark Ross stumbled upon the magnetic North Pole on Canada's Bouvier Peninsula. But since then, it's been on the move covering about 25 miles a year in a northwest direction. That's like a slow but steady stroll across the globe. Now, you might think the Earth's iron core is the mastermind behind this magnetic field, right? Well, not exactly. Despite being hot and metal-filled down there, it's too toasty for the iron to maintain its magnetic mojo. Instead, we turn to something called the geodynamo, which sounds fancy, but is basically like the mechanism in a bicycle's dynamo light. As a cyclist pedals his bike, the magnets in the dynamo spin, generating electricity to power the light. Similarly, deep within the Earth, swirling currents of molten metal create electric currents, which in turn produce our magnetic field. It's like nature's own power generator, keeping our world lit up and safe from cosmic chaos. When it comes to Earth's magnetism, it's a bit of a role reversal. Instead of electricity creating movement, it's the other way around. Moving electric currents make the magnetic field. This magnetic magic happens deep within the Earth's belly, in a place called the outer core. Within this molten, slow-moving soup of charged particles, energy shifts from the swirls and eddies into electrical and magnetic energy. It's like a loop of positive vibes, where the magnetic field sparks electric currents, which then make more magnetic fields, and the cycle goes on. Now why should you care? Well, that magnetic field is like your cosmic bodyguard, keeping you safe from the sun's spacey tantrums. See, on Mars, 
where there's no magnetic field to shield them, astronauts would be toast, literally. That magnetic bubble around Earth, called the magnetosphere, acts like a protective force field, deflecting harmful solar winds that could strip away our precious atmosphere and leave us gasping for air. But that's not all. The magnetosphere also plays goalie against another cosmic threat, cosmic rays. These sneaky particles from deep space can wreak havoc on our DNA, but our magnetic shield blocks them like a superhero deflecting bullets. During coronal mass ejections, the magnetosphere steps up its game, keeping us safe from a surge of dangerous radiation. Coronal mass ejections, CMEs, are like giant burps from the sun's atmosphere, spewing out plasma and magnetic energy. These bursts can hurl billions of tons of solar material into space, along with a powerful magnetic field hitching a ride. These CMEs aren't sluggish. They zoom away from the sun at incredible speeds, ranging from a stroll to a frenzied sprint. Some CMEs take their time, strolling through space for several days before reaching Earth. But others are speed demons, hurtling towards us in just 15, 18 hours. As they journey through space, these CMEs balloon in size, expanding like cosmic balloons. By the time they reach our planet, the biggest ones can stretch across a quarter of the distance between Earth and the Sun. It's like having a celestial giant knocking on our doorstep. The Sun's magnetic field is like a tangled mess of rubber bands. When these bands get twisted up in the Sun's lower atmosphere, they're under a lot of stress. But eventually, they reach their breaking point and snap into a new, more relaxed position. This sudden release of energy is like a cosmic explosion, known as a solar flare. Along with the flare comes a dramatic burst of plasma, shooting out from the sun like a fiery cannonball. These bursts, called the sun's way of blowing off steam, they usually happen in areas where the sun's magnetic field is super strong and wound up tight, like in active regions with sunspots. But that's not the only way CMEs can happen. Sometimes, cooler, denser plasma gets trapped by the sun's magnetic field, forming structures called filaments or prominences. When these structures suddenly collapse or reconfigure, it's like pulling the trigger on a cosmic gun, launching a CME into space. If these CMEs travel faster than the normal solar wind speed, they can create shockwaves. These waves can turbocharge charged particles ahead of them, ramping up the potential for radiation storms. It's like a cosmic roller coaster ride with charged particles speeding ahead, ready to shake things up wherever they go. What makes a CME a potential storm maker? When a CME arrives, scientists pay close attention to two key things, the strength and direction of the interplanetary magnetic field, EMF. This EMF comes rushing in with the CME's shockwave, followed by the plasma cloud and its magnetic field. The more powerful and longer lasting the IMF, especially if it's pointing southward, the more likely we are to see some serious geomagnetic storming. Some CMEs come with a magnetic field that's mostly facing one direction as it sweeps over Earth, while others flip-flop as they pass by. No matter the direction, if a CME messes with Earth's magnetic shield, there's a good chance it'll stir up some geomagnetic trouble. These storms come in different flavors, rated on a scale by NOAA from 1 to 5. And it's not just guesswork. Forecasters analyze CMEs and predict storm levels in their forecast discussions, giving us a heads up on what to expect in the next three days. It's like having a cosmic weather report, helping us brace for any magnetic mayhem headed our way. So next time you look up at the sky, give a nod to our mighty magnetosphere, the unsung hero keeping us safe from the cosmic chaos swirling around us. It's like our own personal force field standing guard against the universe's wild side. Sure, the magnetosphere is like our cosmic shield, but it's not invincible. Sometimes, it gets breached, especially during geomagnetic storms triggered by strong solar winds or massive coronal mass ejections. When this happens, it can mess with our radio signals and power grids, causing widespread outages. It might even pose a danger to astronauts and satellites orbiting Earth. But not all effects are bad. In fact, some are downright magical. Ever dreamt of seeing the Northern Lights or the Southern Lights? Well, you can thank these disturbances in the Earth's magnetic field for those amazing light shows. 
When charged particles from the sun collide with oxygen atoms near the poles, they create those breathtaking auroras that dance across the sky. Now Earth isn't the only planet with magnetic mojo. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune all boast magnetic fields stronger than ours, while Venus, despite having a liquid core, doesn't spin fast enough to generate one. And get this, magnetic poles flipping? It's not just a sci-fi plot twist, it's a real phenomenon called the Lachamp excursion. As the planet's magnetic poles weaken, the magnetic field tilts, and suddenly, it's like our cosmic compass goes haywire. During the Lachamp excursion, the magnetic force that usually guides solar particles to the poles, lighting up our skies with auroras, takes a vacation. So, while it might sound like a wild ride, you definitely wouldn't want a front row seat for this magnetic makeover. Around 41,000 years ago, our planet went through a magnetic makeover, and it took about 1 1300 years for things to settle down. During this magnetic flip-flop, something strange happened. The colorful auroras, usually found near the poles, decided to take a detour down to warmer, near-equatorial latitudes. Imagine seeing those dancing lights where you'd least expect them. This magnetic turnabout isn't a common occurrence. Scientists figure it happens roughly every 200,000 to 300,000 years. And when it does, it's not a quick fix. It could take hundreds or even thousands of years for the whole process to play out. But how do we even know about these ancient magnetic mood swings? Well, it's all thanks to tiny magnetic molecules trapped in volcanic rocks and other sediments. These molecules act like time capsules, preserving the direction of the Earth's magnetic field when they were formed. So by studying these rocks, scientists can piece together the planet's magnetic history. But the Lachamp excursion wasn't just about pretty lights. It had some serious consequences for life on Earth. Take, for instance, a recent study in northern New Zealand, where researchers dug into the past by analyzing ancient swamp-preserved trees. These trees held clues in their carbon-14 levels, a radioactive isotope used to date ancient materials. During the Lachamp event, as the magnetic field weakened, the carbon-14 levels in these trees went haywire. It was like a ripple effect, showing just how much this magnetic mayhem impacted life thousands of years ago. So while the auroras may steal the spotlight, the real story lies in how these magnetic twists and turns shaped our world. Their investigation uncovered something fascinating, a spike in radioactive carbon levels in the atmosphere. Essentially, they found that when there was more carbon-14 around, it lined up perfectly with times of major global changes, both in climate and biology. For instance, around the same time, large animals in Australia were on the decline, possibly leading to extinction. Meanwhile, Neanderthals in Europe were facing a similar fate. These creatures likely struggled to adapt to drastic changes in their environment, which may have been linked to shifts in climate. Now, here's where things get really interesting. Computer models suggest that even a small dip in the Earth's magnetic field, say, just 6%, can trigger big climate shifts. This weakening of the magnetic shield messes with the ozone layer, allowing more harmful UV rays to seep in and altering how our atmosphere absorbs the sun's rays. During this turbulent time, our ancient ancestors might have sought refuge in caves to escape the harsh sunlight. With time on their hands, they got creative and started painting those famous cave artworks. So, in a way, these magnetic fluctuations shape not just the environment, but also our cultural heritage. As for when the next magnetic pole reversal might happen, scientists are on the lookout. Signs like the North Pole's wandering journey and the weakening magnetic field over the past 170 years suggest it could be sooner than we think. With at least 171 reversals in the last 71 million years, it's a phenomenon worth studying closely. But if the poles flip today, one of the most noticeable and uncomfortable effects could be a spike in cancer cases. That's because the weakened magnetic shield would let more harmful cosmic rays reach the Earth's surface putting us at greater risk. It's a reminder of just how interconnected our planet's systems are and why understanding these magnetic mysteries is so crucial for our future. Think of the Earth's magnetic field 
as our cosmic shield, protecting us from harmful solar particles and cosmic rays that could mess with our DNA and potentially increase cancer risks. But if the magnetic poles flip after a period of wonky behavior, the danger to life could ramp up big time. And it's not just us Earthlings feeling the effects. Satellites orbiting our planet are already experiencing the consequences of a weaker magnetic field, especially in a spot called the South Atlantic Anomaly, SAA. Imagine a spot on Earth where the protective shield of our magnetic field is a bit flimsier than usual. That's the South Atlantic Anomaly, a special zone where the inner Van Allen radiation belt gets uncomfortably close to our planet's surface, just about 200 kilometers above us. Now, why does this matter? Well, when this radiation belt dips down, it lets in a bunch of energetic particles, kind of like opening a door to cosmic trouble. And who gets caught in the crossfire? Our trusty orbiting satellites, including the International Space Station, ESS, end up facing higher levels of ionizing radiation than they signed up for. But the SAA isn't just a fluke. It's a consequence of Earth being a bit lopsided. Our planet's magnetic field isn't perfectly centered thanks to its lopsided shape and magnetic makeup. And lately, this anomaly seems to be getting stronger, like a cosmic glitch on the rise. So the SAA isn't just any old weak spot in our magnetic shield. It's a hot spot where our protective bubble gets a bit thin, leaving our satellites vulnerable to a cosmic bombardment. It's a reminder that even our planet's defenses have their weak points, and in space, that can be a risky game to play. The Van Allen radiation belt sits snugly within the Earth's magnetic field. Now, this magnetic bubble isn't perfectly symmetrical. It's like if you had a small but powerful bar magnet, representing Earth's magnetism, but instead of being perfectly centered, it's a bit off kilter, tilted more towards one side. Because of this setup, the inner Van Allen belt gets closest to the Earth's surface over the southern part of the Atlantic Ocean, dipping down to just 200 kilometers above us. But head over to the northern Pacific Ocean, and you'll find it's farthest away from the surface. Scientists first spotted the SA back in the 1950s, and since then, it's gotten even weaker and scooted closer to the west. Satellites passing through this magnetic weak spot often throw a technological tantrum, experiencing electronic glitches and malfunctions. But this isn't just a local problem. Models suggest that the features causing trouble in the SAA could spread globally, impacting satellites all over the planet. So, while we're still unraveling the mysteries of this magnetic maze, it's clear that a weaker magnetic field isn't just a nuisance, it's a potential headache for our high-flying technology. Think of the SAA as a sort of test run for what could happen if the Earth's magnetic poles decided to flip today. Interestingly, anything that messes with our satellites could spell trouble for us down on Earth. If our electric grid gets knocked out, it's not just your gadgets that'll go dark. Your fridge, your TV, your Wi-Fi, all could be toast. Why? Well, we built our modern world when the Earth's magnetic field was strong and stable, not expecting it to flip on us. So now, even small changes can wreak havoc on our delicate infrastructure. Imagine a world without the internet, without social media or YouTube, without phones or GPS. No more live broadcasts, weather updates, or even basic communication. According to the experts, you might not even have electricity to power your home. And forget about using a compass. It'll just point you in the wrong direction. It's a reminder that while we may take these things for granted, our reliance on technology leaves us vulnerable to the whims of our planet's magnetic field. So, if the poles decide to flip, get ready for a ride, because it'll be a bumpy one. What are your thoughts about what's going on in the Earth's magnetic field? Let us know your opinion in the comments below. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.